Hi, I'm, I'm Sri Harsha. Uh, I'm with the IoT Central team here, and I'm here to talk about security. So in this session, I'm going to talk about securing your IoT Central application and all the various avenues that IoT Central provides you to secure access and connections to devices, data, and the integrations. So when you think about security, it's not an isolated concept, but has to be pegged into all areas of your IoT solution. So that comes right from connecting to your devices, uh, managing access to your device data within the application, and to be able to securely connect data to your you know, data export destinations. So in this conversation, I'm going to talk about and also demonstrate some of the capabilities that IoT Central provides you uh, to securely connect your devices to the cloud using private link and manage access control for your devices and users within the application uh, using organizations and secure the connection to your export destinations on the far right uh, by using managed identities. So how do you secure your data uh, or devices on connecting to IoT Central applications? So when you have your IoT Central application, the endpoints are designed to be accessible from the public URLs. So which means any device with valid access and valid identity can actually connect to your IoT Central application from any location. To improve the security though, so you might want to limit and secure the device connectivity to your IoT Central application and only allow devices to come in through your private virtual network. Uh, so you can use the IoT Central's private endpoint capabilities to achieve that goal. So you can create the IoT Central's private endpoint to allow devices within the virtual network or connecting to the virtual network to actually securely connect data and transmit data to IoT Central application and to enable that bi bi-directional communication uh, completely within your private virtual network. So I'm going to show a quick demo uh, of this capability in action. On Azure Portal, we provide the capabilities to let you connect or create the private network destinations and the private network access to your IoT Central application. So on the networking tab, go to private endpoint connections, and here is where you'll create a private endpoint. So this involves a few steps here. So when I click a private plus private endpoint, I'm going to be giving a name to my private endpoint. In this case, I'm giving it my PE1. Uh, I want it to be in the West US3 region, which is where all of my other resources are. So when, when you click Next, the resource will be auto-populated for you because you are coming in from the IoT Central application. And the next step is where you will actually associate a virtual network uh, with this private endpoint, so that all the data remains in that virtual network for you. And when I click Create, it's going to review plus create, it's going to validate my entire uh, uh, selections and make sure it's all, uh, it's all validated for it to be created. So what it is doing right now is it is actually creating all the resources that are required for the IoT Central uh, private endpoint to be created uh, so that when it is done creating, you'll have a private endpoint that your devices can securely connect to. So once the private endpoint uh, creation is done, uh, you'll, you'll go back to the IoT Central application and on the networking tab, I can see the connection is all in place. Now is the time for me to go disable public access on my IoT Central application. So all public access to this application is disabled by default. And the only way to access or send data to the IoT Central application is through the private endpoint. So I would come here, click disable, or I can even choose the selected IP ranges if there is a selected IP ranges that I want to allow in. But in this case, I want to disable it completely from the internet. So I will click disable, I will click disable and, and click save. That's going to update the public network access for me. Now, at this point, the application is completely locked from the public internet. And the only way to come in is through the virtual network here. OK, now you've seen how do you secure your device traffic coming in from the internet to the IoT Central application. Now let's talk about the data egress. So for an IoT solution, you're not typically stopping at IoT Central. You typically have the other data destinations that you would want to send data to, um, be it uh, for your business integration needs, you know, for your powering your business analytics workflows, or long-term storage, um, or anything. But, but when you have all of these resources, uh, you have to deal with managing credentials for all of these resources. Now. Managing credentials for all the resources come up with their own set of challenges. Um, 
how do you securely store them? How do you uh, rotate them so often? Now, what's the best way for us to manage this problem? Well, uh, why don't we just eliminate the credential altogether? So IoT Central provides system assigned manager entities. So using those system assigned manager entities, you can securely connect to other Azure resources uh, with no credentials involved, and there are no secrets to store or manage. So using managed entities have a lot of benefits. You know, you don't need to manage credentials. Uh, those credentials are not even accessible to you. Uh, you can use managed entities to authenticate to any resource that supports Azure Active Directory authentication. And best of all, there is no cost involved. Managed entities can be used without any additional cost. Now I want to show it in action for you. So to set up managed entities, you navigate your IoT Central application on the Azure portal, go to the Identity tab, and you select the radio button to be on. So this does a few things. So this is going to enable the managed entity for your IoT Central application, which means your IoT Central application is going to be registered on the Azure Active Directory as an object. Now, now that you have an object ID for that IoT Central application, you can now use this managed entity to authenticate to other Azure destinations uh, without needing to actually exchange any credentials uh, in the process. So in this example, I'm going to uh, I'm going to have a, a data export set up to my event hub destination, and I want to connect to that event hub destination using this managed entity. So this is my event hub namespace here. So the first step is going to make sure the IoT Central application has permissions to send data to that event hub. And that's the beauty of managed entities here is that you know I don't have to actually give all the permissions that are needed. I can use the beauty of the Azure rule-based access control to provide granular permissions so that my IoT Central application has only enough permission to send data to Event Hub and nothing else. So it, I'm going to add a role assignment. So the, the role I'm going to choose is called Event Hub Data Sender. And this role has only access to sending data to the Event Hubs. On the next screen, I'm going to assign access to the managed entity that I've just created. Uh, since this is a managed entity registered with the Azure Active Directory, uh, it is actually going to be visible in the Active Directory space. So I go to uh, System Assigned Manager Entities and select my IoT Central application uh, in this, in this uh, screen here. So when I review and assign this application, uh, when, when I review and assign, when I review and assign um, uh, this permission, so my IoT Central Applications Manager entity was added to Event Hubs uh, to send data to that Event Hub. Now I have a Manager entity. I have made sure I have given right permissions. When you come back to your IoT Central Application to set up your export destinations here. So in this case, I'll come to my IoT Central Application and set up my data export. So I'm going to be starting a new export. And this is my export for my data processing pipeline to the Event Hub. I want to export telemetry, and now I want to actually create the new destination, which is that event hub that I was going to be using. So I'm going to be creating a new destination. It is an event hub type. And instead of using a connection string uh, way of connecting to that event hub, I want to switch to using managed entities. And here is where you can actually see there is no secret or credential management is involved, and there is no secret that you're sharing with IoT Central. So I come back to event hub. Uh, grab the name from that event hub, which is what is really needed, and the event hub that is in, in that event hub namespace. So when I click create, what you're going to see is that IoT Central, since it is registered with Azure Active Directory, uh, it is going to have access to that event hub based on the role-based access control that already already provided. And now IoT Central is able to actually send data to that event hub just using the managed entity uh, with no credentials that are involved in the, in the process. So now you can see the data export to the destination using managed entity is healthy, and the export destination is continuously receiving the data being sent by the devices uh, to the IoT Central application. Let me get back to my slides here. So now you've secured data coming into IoT Central. You have managed to secure data going out of IoT Central. So what about the device data and user access within the IoT Central application? And the combination of role-based access control and organizations 
provides a way for you to ensure right people have access to right devices at the right time while building multi-tenancy in your application. So how does organizations work? You first get started by defining this organizational structure within your IoT central application to organize and way to control your access of your assets. So once you've defined your organization structure, you will be able to assign devices to a given organization. Devices can also be remaining, like after you assign the devices to individual organizations, uh, you can also ensure some of the devices can remain unassigned and they'll only be accessible to you as an organization administrator. And when you have users, you invite the users to the organizations. And when you actually invite a user, you'll be asked to define what organization they should have access to, along with the role uh, that you want to assign to that organization. Single user can have access to multiple organizations with different roles for each. It's pretty flexible in that regard. Lastly, as the users move across the IoT central application, access to different, different experiences like jobs, rules, access control, everything will be scoped based on the user's organizational access. Let me actually show it to you in action. In my IoT central application, organizations are under uh, permissions tab here. So you can see that I've created a hierarchy of organizations for this application. And also when I added users, you can see that the users were given specific roles uh, in the specific organizations. And the same applies to everywhere. So when I add devices, I can ensure the devices are belonging to that organization were assigned to that organization. Uh, so the entire experiences can you know, follow along with the organizations. So in this example, uh, you can see all the users here. I'm going to be focusing on one user uh, who is an org administrator uh, for a specific org, uh, for a specific organization in the hierarchy. So if I switch to that user here, you can see this user only has access to uh, the Building 17 organization. So all he can see are the devices that belong to Building 17 and nothing else. The same thing applies to other, uh, other areas of the application as well. When he goes see the organizations, uh, the user can only see the organization that he belongs to and the hierarchy of it. Uh, the user cannot see all the other organizations in that application, uh, similar to users. The user can only see the users belonging to the same organization that he is in, or he or she is in. Uh, and there's no way a user can actually understand or see who else is in the application. And similarly, for jobs, for uh, the user can only see the jobs that uh, belong to the Building 17 organization, and similar to that device groups as well. So this organization concept follows uh, the user across the application using the combination of rule-based access control and organizations helps you to fine grain your access control within the application uh, and, and be able to actually do a multi-tenant operation within the application. Thanks, thanks for watching this video. Hope this was pretty useful for you and looking forward to for you to try out all the features of IoT Central. Uh, to learn more about all of the capabilities, uh, visit our homepage, apps.azureiotcentral.com. You can also visit ak.ms IoT Central demos to watch all the demonstrations of IoT Central's capabilities. Thank you.